For this screen recording, I'm going to do problem 6 from the 2005 BC Cow Free Response. So this problem deals with uh, your Taylor polynomials, which are always a lot of fun. Um, here, instead of giving you uh, one of the three, or I guess four if you include ln of x, uh, basic Taylor polynomials, it, it asks you to construct one given certain parameters. We're, we're given three basic parameters, which are written out in a slightly complicated and hard to understand way. But when simplified, they are relatively simple. For when f, when the function of f is, uh, is defined at 2, you get 7, which I wrote as 2. And then when n is odd, the nth derivative so any derivative of any uh, of any degree, because it states here that f is a, a function with derivatives at all orders. When n is odd, f to the nth derivative equals zero, so it just doesn't exist. It's not there. However, when n is even, f to the nth derivative of two equals n minus one factorial over three to the n. A asks us to write the 6th degree Taylor polynomial for f about x equals 2, which is convenient because they don't give us any other information about f besides it being at 2. Given the general form of the Taylor polynomial, we can essentially just plug in and uh, plug and play with this entire Taylor polynomial. What you get when you plug it all in is 7 because that's what... Uh, f of 2 is, it tells you up here. Then the next term, which would be right here, uh, is 0. So then you move on to the uh, second derivative. And so the pattern follows. Uh, you go out to the sixth degree, which in fact is only five terms, four terms, sorry. Um, it's only four terms, but it does go out to the sixth degree. Now moving on to b. It asks in the Taylor series for f about x equals 2, what is the coefficient for of the x minus 2 to the 2n? So it basically is asking what's the general form for all the coefficients of the odd, or I'm sorry, even uh, degrees. So what we're going to construct is a general form. The general form can be taken using the original uh, function for the even terms and substituting 2n every time there is an n because this would make it so obviously every single one would be even. Unsimplified, um, the unsimplified and just substitute in this is what it looks like. Uh, using simplification we can uh, cross out this right here and the factorial on this because oops I did that wrong it is in fact the other way around where you cross out this because it's a minus one and you keep this and I can't erase that evenly right now because this screen recorder takes up too much of the RAM. Um, anyway, so you bring that all over, you end up with one over three to the two n times two n. And that is your answer to B. Now we get to C, which is an entirely different animal. It asks you to find the interval of convergence of the Taylor series for f about x equals 2, and show your work and blah blah blah. So what we're going to have to do is set up a set up the ratio test to find, first of all, if it converges, and if it converges, where it converges. From our work in the previous two problems, we find we can derive our actual equation for f. So we have seven because it's that's the first term, it's the initial value. And then we have the summation that defines the rest of the Taylor series. So to do this, we're gonna set up the ratio test, which calls for a of n plus one over a of n and 
the absolute value of that and the limit as n approaches infinity. So set up the ratio test looks like this, which kind of is a mess. But hopefully, and according to our general predictions of for response questions, these will all cancel out and turn into something relatively neat. Grouped up and separated, this is what it will turn out to be. So as you can see here, obviously some nice canceling will happen, which is nice and convenient. And so let's see how that turns out. What we can do is we can cancel the 3 to the 2n because that will divide out. And also we can cross this off right here and the 2n because in reality that's just multiply that. I split it out on this one, but I didn't actually end up splitting it out on uh, this one. Oops, that circles off, but whatever. Um, so continuing forward, what we can do is cross out the two ends here. And because this is in fact a limit, this two, and we're going to infinity, which I, it's, it's over here. Um, this two will become insignificant. So in result, what you end up with is x minus two squared over three squared, which ends up being nine, equals the limit as n approaches infinity of the all that mumbled mumbo jumbo we had over there. I'm just not gonna write it because I am lazy and it is late. Going to back to what we were originally doing, we want we want to know when the limit L is less than one. And we can find that by just solving. So essentially we have nine, which is a constant. So the only thing we're ever changing is the top. So when is the limit less than one is when the absolute value of x minus two is less than three. That should be absolute value. Because that would make it nine, which is one. So from that, we can solve creating two scenarios. So x minus two is less than three, or x. Uh, minus 2 is greater than negative 3. And this, because we're looking for limits, we're looking for the endpoints of these inequalities, which we will get at, for this one, when x equals 5, and for this one, when x equals negative 1. So, our limit of our our limits of convergence are from negative one uh, is less than x to and that is less than five. So now we must test the endpoints, which is exciting and I hate it. So what we're going to do is just plug in the endpoints to the problem. When x equals five, the series is represented by this and. We get the numerator by just plugging in 5 to the general form. Um, so what we can do here is cancel that. And what you end up with is 7 plus 1 half times the summation of 1 over n, which is our good old friend and buddy, the divergence, or not the, spoiler alert, um, the harmonic series which diverges. The story is again similar with uh, x equals negative 1, which again simplifies to the exact same thing. 7 plus equals 1 half uh, the summation of 1 over n, which diverges. So we can confirm that our limits 
or our interval of convergence is negative 1 to 5. The end.